Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday morning service in Cook. Hope you didn't mind having an hour's less time in bed this morning. Today, we will be concluding our studies in the book of Genesis when we recount the, the death of Abraham at the end of a very long life. We hope that you will gain some benefit and, and help and encouragement from this time together. The title of our sermon this morning will be Abraham 175 Not Out. And Jesus speaks of Abraham in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22, and at verse 32, and he says this. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Let us pray. We are here to worship you today. We're scattered in our homes. We cannot meet together, but we can meet with you and through you, we can enjoy fellowship. We can pray, we can read your word, we can find comfort in it. So Father, be with us today as we meet together as Cook Church. Grant us your blessing. Speak into our hearts and meet our need. We ask these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from Genesis chapter 25, verses 5 to 11. Last week we saw how Abraham had sent to his own family to find a wife for Isaac and Rebekah came back to be married to him. During the remainder of Abraham's life he remarried again and had some more children. You can read about those uh, children in the first few verses of this chapter. But now the time has come for Abraham to die. And that's where we take up the story at verse 5. Abraham left everything he owned to Isaac. But while he was still living, he gave gifts to the sons of his concubines and sent them away from his son Isaac to the land of the east. Abraham lived 175 years. Then Abraham breathed his last and died at a good old age, an old man and full of years, and he was gathered to his people. His sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave at Melpilah, near Mamre, in the field of Ephron, son of Zohar the Hittite, the field Abraham had bought from the Hittites. There Abraham was buried with his wife Sarah. After Abraham's death, God blessed his son Isaac, who then lived near Ber Laha Rua. We know that God will indeed bless this reading of his holy word. The title of our sermon today is 175 Not Out. It's not a cricket term, it's to do with the life of Abraham. That's how long he lived. And then his earthly life came to an end. But was that the end of Abraham? No, it wasn't. Maybe we'll get to that point later on. I must admit, 
I was a little concerned about having to preach about this in the midst of what we're going through as a nation and as a world at this time. The coronavirus is taking lives right across this globe in our own province and maybe very soon in the streets and homes of the people around us and maybe even into our own family situations. Why would I choose then to speak about the death of Abraham? Well, I do want to speak about his death, but I want to speak more about what we have learned from his life. And having lived to 175 years, well, can you expect much more? Well, I do believe you can, no matter what age you live to. But maybe we'll get to that in a little while. So what can we learn from the life of Abraham? At the very beginning of this story, God spoke into Abraham's heart and life and told him to go to a new land. And in that land of Canaan, he would be the father of a mighty nation. And the first thing I want you to think about today is that Abraham listened to God's voice. Not only did he hear it, but he actually listened to what God wanted him to do. And then he did it. So many people have heard God speaking into their lives and have come up with reasons and excuses not to obey what he has asked them to do. But Abraham listened. He listened and he left his home and all that he knew and the security of it to go to a different place simply because God called him to do that. This was indeed a man of faith. A man who lived his life listening to what God was saying to him. And I think it's important that we too listen to God. We need to listen to him today. We need to listen to his voice. We need to hear what he is saying to us in the midst of all that is happening around us. Who would have believed three months ago that we would be in lockdown almost? Nobody working apart from those in essential services. Spending most of our time at home, not out and about, socialising, visiting friends and family, going to the shops, buying new clothes, taking holidays. Who would have believed it three months ago that we would be where we are now? Maybe it's time we started to listen to God's voice. The second thing I wanted us to think about today was how loyal Abraham was. And I'm thinking about all those journeys he had with his nephew Lot. Remember how he uh, divided up the country by giving Lot the first choice of the land and he chose the plains, the rich and fertile plains where Sodom and Gomorrah were situated. Or Abraham came to his nephew's rescue after he had been carried off uh, as a slave, having lost all his possessions. He rescued him, restored his possessions and brought him back to the land of Sodom and Gomorrah again. He then pleaded for those cities and for his nephew's life really as God had planned to destroy the wickedness that was there. And there was that wonderful chapter when God and Abraham talked to each other and Abraham said, if there are 50 righteous people in this town and in these cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, 
surely you won't destroy it and God said no I won't and then it went to 40 and then it went to 30 and down to 10 but the wickedness of those places was so great that God was determined to destroy them but yet he saved Lot and his family he would have saved his wife also but oh, well she hankered back for that place and we all know what happened to her Abraham was loyal kept his word looked after his nephew But then there was another side to Abraham as there is a side to all of us. Abraham also lied at times. Particularly to do with his wife Sarah who also happened to be his half-sister. And when he went to Egypt because of famine and when he was in the land of Abimelech, the king, twice he did the same thing. He panned his wife off as his sister in order to save his own life. He didn't fully tell a lie, but he didn't fully tell the truth either. And he got those two kings into real danger and bother. Simply because he didn't trust in God. There were times when he just lost that trust. Well, the older that Sarah got, the less likely it would seem that she could have a child. And then, of course, she and he had this plan that Hagar could bear them a child. And maybe this would fulfill God's plan and purpose. But that wasn't God's plan for Abraham. So he did lie and he did make some mistakes. You know, this is the wonderful thing about the Bible. It doesn't airbrush the faults out of people. But it says that God, in spite of our faults, can still use us. Abraham still had in his head the words of God that said, you know, Look up to the stars and you can see the stars there. Your descendants will be more numerous than them. Look at the grains of sand on the seashore. You will have children greater in number than these. And yet he did not have a son of his own. God kept his promise to Abraham. Even though on a number of occasions he was very cross with them. And you know, is that not true for you and for me? Serving our Saviour and Lord Jesus Christ means that we must obey him in everything. Yet we know that we have failed him on so many occasions. Does it mean that God can't use us? Of course not. The Bible, as we've said, is full of people who had faults and who made mistakes and who God used mightily. He still wants to use you and me, surprising as it may seem. Oh, the Abraham listened to God was loyal to God and to his family and to his friends. Also lied to kings because he was in trouble. We can also say that Abraham lived life to the full. For 175 years, Abraham lived life to the full. Called to the land of Canaan, into Egypt, and back again. Wars, fights, promises broken. Riches beyond the wildest dreams were all of his. And then a son. 
And then listening again to God's voice, God said, sacrifice that son. Oh, how could that be? But we also saw how that was a picture of that first Easter, where God sacrificed his own son for you and for me and for this whole world. Provided a substitute for Abraham but not so when Jesus died upon that cross so here's Abraham a man who lived life to the full and then that life was drawing to a close we're living in a time that we have never experienced before and we're all anxious and frightened about the future. If the Prime Minister can get this coronavirus, if Prince Charles can get it, then surely we might get it too. And the elephant in the room in saying that is that we might also face death and although we don't like to talk about it or think about it the truth is that whether it's in this season of coronavirus or whether we get through it and live for 10 20 30 40 or more years there comes a point in time when this life of ours here on earth draws to a close When Jesus at the beginning of our service was questioned about resurrection by some of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and so on and they gave him a puzzle about uh, a widow who married one brother after another and whose wife would she be in heaven and so on. And Jesus just told them to stop being silly. And those words that we read at the beginning about Abraham really came true. Because although Abraham lived on this earth for 175 years, it was 175 not out. Death holds no sting for those who love the Lord and the grave no victory. Abraham is alive today in God's presence, along with countless millions of others who have had faith in the living God and in Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. Someday this life of ours will draw to a close. Will we have listened to him? Have we been loyal in following him? Maybe we have lied, made mistakes, gone our own way, done our own thing, just as Abraham did on occasion. But have we lived life to the full? And even when we're restricted at home or whatever, are we still living life to the full? Are we using our time wisely? Are we praying for others? Are we thinking about people who are working in the health service, praying for their protection? Or are we sitting just frightened that it might come knocking at our door? That's not the way a Christian should live. We should live life to the fullest, knowing that God will call us home when he is finished with when we are finished really with the work that he has called us to do here on earth. The Apostle Paul says that death holds no sting for those who are in Christ. And he also said that nothing can separate us 
from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. But he says, I am persuaded or convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love. And he, and he talks about war and famine and a whole range of things, people, principalities and powers. But nothing can separate us from God's love. So at a time when so many people are frightened, Christian men and women should know this, that your life is safe and secure in God's hands. When your work here on earth is done, he will call you home. So live life to the full. Shall we pray together? Let's pray. Father, we do realise that our lives are in your hands. And in doing so, we are confident that you will see us through this time of real difficulty. But we also know that there are many people who are hurting and who are worried and perplexed. We pray, Father, that you would comfort and strengthen those who are feeling so vulnerable at this time. We think particularly of those who are elderly and living alone. We pray, Father, for those who are working tirelessly within our National Health Service in all departments and in all ways to fight this awful disease to bring people to health and to strength again. Father, they are under immense pressure. Give them the strength that they need for each new day. We pray for our government, for our Prime Minister, and we pray that he, along with Prince Charles and everyone else who has this disease, will recover. But we pray for our government as they make decisions and choices. And here in our own province for our First Minister and Deputy First Minister and Minister of Health. That you would guide them in the choices and decisions that they must make. We pray for those who have been bereaved. Who have found it difficult not being able to say goodbye to a loved one, to hold their hand, to kiss their brow. And maybe in the days that lie ahead, not really to have a proper funeral for them. Be their comfort and their strength. We pray for this world in which we live and for the many thousands across this globe who have had this virus. We thank you that many and most will recover, but we know for some it will have deadly consequences. Father, in your mercy, heal this world. In Jesus' name, we pray that you would bring this virus quickly to an end. We pray for those who are worried about their future, about their jobs, about their families, about how they're going to feed people, about the, the huge consequences that this virus is having on our everyday life and on our futures. Father, we commit our lives and tomorrow and the day after to you. And we pray for that those who are worried and perplexed may know your presence and your peace in their hearts. 
we offer you these our prayers. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, just before we bring this service to a close, I just want to remind you of a few things that will be happening over these next couple of weeks. Firstly, on Wednesday evening, I'll be doing a midweek thought and reflection. It will be available probably from about seven o'clock on Wednesday evening. And then next Sunday, it's Palm Sunday. And in Cook, we normally have communion on Palm Sunday. And I would quite like us to follow that tradition. So in your home, just get some wine or slur juice or whatever. Sorry for advertising, but uh, together with a little bit of bread, maybe a family will gather around uh, and and we, we at the end of that service, as part of that service, will have communion together. Then in Holy Week, uh, I'll be doing a reflection every day. Um, the ministers of Presbytery will be doing readings together telling the whole story of the Passion on Good Friday, but we'll give you more details of how you can find that. Uh, the Reverend Ben Walker uh, from Sainfield Road will be putting that all together. And then, uh, of course, there will be our Easter morning service. So I hope these things will help you. There's this new text service as well, that we've introduced in Cook if anybody needs help or whatever. And please, if you do want someone to pray with you, if you do want someone to talk to, then please lift the phone and call me. You'll find my number on our Cook website and lots of other information about other things that are happening as well. So this morning, I want to draw this service to a close and just to pray God's blessing and protection over you and over us all. So let's pray together. Father, we face a new week and we do not know what this week will hold. But we bring it to you and we will promise to serve you and follow you in every moment of the days that lie before us. Help us to live for you each day and to know that you will be with us in every aspect of our lives. And may grace mercy and peace from Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen.